All right, guys, AJX22 here, and we're doing a uh, hardness test on the larger of the ugly Taurus sisters. So we're going to be testing um, on the flats. Um, this is going to be kind of an awkward piece to do just because of how hardness testing works, but we'll, we'll test here. We'll probably test somewhere in the barrel and then on the cylinder just to get read readings. And uh, with a little luck, if it doesn't you know, go catastrophically. Uh, we'll have some video of this, the process, not just the number for you. So, alrighty. To support that and not screw with it. Let's see here. Alright. Just the height to the. These really aren't designed for. Uh, the poor guns being that's the fine adjustment or the, the preload we're set to zero right preload and set to zero unders in oh that's soft how soft 16 really yeah punch it again Different spot. A smaller anvil to get to different spots. So I have a smaller anvil. All right. Stop so. recording. All right. Zeroed out. Trying it on the side of the barrel. Wouldn't recommend doing this on a gun that you uh, care about the prettiness of. Now you got 44. Ooh, barrels testing at 44. That's. Uh, and the general rule is you test three times. All right. And you average the results together. Test three times, average the results. 45. 45, that's more in line with what I was expecting for a good gun. Teens were not good numbers. 45. 45, so the barrel's testing at 40, Five. 45. 44 to 45, so they're gonna call that good. Okay. I don't. Let me shut it off for a minute. Right. This is not an accepted standard way of doing this, but um, hopefully we can get some numbers to work with. You know, this is a just trying to get a will it blow up in our hands idea. Ooh. Nine. Nine? Like it can't be right. Even dead soft to be in the teens, wouldn't it? Yeah, should be. That's why I don't trust the test because it's, it's compressing the. It's compressing the shims. The shims and it's not supported well. That's thirty-one. Thirty-one is better. It's probably closer to uh, a real number. I mean, any any deviancy is going to err on the side of soft, right? Thirty. Um, yeah. Errors are to the soft side usually. It'd be hard to get a false hard reading. Yep. Forty-five. Forty-five. Could just be that there's a soft side of the cylinder. <laughs> so for the first two rounds, we're golden. What you're saying? Well, depending on if you know which two those are. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. I wonder if Taurus will actually tell us what it's supposed to be at. No. Thirty-four. So you got a couple at 30, a couple of 34, 35, and one at 45. So the 9 was just a false positive? The 9, either, well, do we know which side it was? We could go back and do it again. It might be a soft spot. It might be a soft side. It might be this side that has the weird heat pattern to it. Yeah. All right, well, we can try it one more time. It might be just a soft side. It might be that there's one part that's not good. Yeah.
35. 35. I don't know which side it was. 35 is surprisingly consistent on this. I wonder if they left the cylinders slightly softer than the barrel just because of the expansion contraction forces. 34. I don't think I'd have a lot of worry on a 34. Almost seems like the uh, it's settling into the little text test uh, fixture, and as it settles in, it's getting better. Thirty-three. A little bit of uh, bated breath with this stuff. That's a ball. that's a that's a improper reading. Yeah. Something's moving. I'm not ready to be. seen a soft test again so no that's just the first one I'm inclined to uh, chalk that up to an error there's, not gonna, there's no way for one spot one eighth of an inch to be nine and one to be 33 not really. <laughs> or 40 33 33 yeah that's enough testing there to go there's lots of little test marks <laughs> yep well, if nothing else, the little dots make me feel more comfortable. <laughs> make sure you stone them all off. Stone them all off, yeah, because this is going to be a pretty gun. No, you do need to stone them off because they're they might hit the. Oh, they might clear. They might hit the. I don't know if the tolerance is on a torus or close enough. Right, so anyway, I'll use stone them. Just take all stone right, them. Just, I'll take a stone. I'll take a stone. So, anyway, to do the. Uh, Yeah, the problem with the uh, the problem with doing it this way is just the inherent leverage from that ridiculous barrel sticking off the side of it. I don't know how it's gonna come out reasonable. We almost need like a lattice structure or, or some sort of counterbalance that can be bolted onto the end of the gun. Sixteen, sixteen and a half. Sixteen. Seventeen. That's pretty soft. That's pretty soft. Is there any way to do one like closer to the breech face or in the top strap? No, I can't get up there. Not with this kind of tester. So we need to get a, a different anvil. We need a portable tester that you can clamp around the part. Portable tester? Yeah. See that? Yeah. That's just moving the gun. That's anytime it's moving like that, it's not gonna get a good reading. Yeah. The good thing is if I push it up a little bit, it seems to be stable, see? Yeah, so if as long as you keep the upward pressure then I'll try to get as good of a test as I can here. Pushes up to like 17. So it's the same kind of see where numbers we were seeing before. Yeah. 
that's definitely soft back there, but like you said, that's the area that burned. Now, we can move up onto the frame. And no way to like just get up here. I need, it has to be flat on the bottom. Right. So it sits on the, on the end of the flat. testing the side cover more than the frame though. Are we on the frame or are we on the side cover? Uh, it looks I need like to be on the frame on in the that side. little spot of the frame. See that spot of the frame right yeah. there? That's where I need to be to get a good test. Most exciting video ever. <laughs> Maybe if we add like action music. 16. 16? I'm noticing a trend. That's can we is there any way to do a here. V block test right on the uh, the round spot of the Sure. I'm concerned about the top strap. Yep. And the breech face. It's amazing how much variety we're getting. I kind I almost wonder if if they did a uniform heat treat on the on the frame at that point. You know? Maybe. Pretty stable. Stable enough to test. Fifteen. Fifteen at right there. Right there. But the barrel two inches from that is forties. Forties, right? Hard to say. We can test this again next to it. Fifteen. I mean, I, I kind of almost think the frame's dead soft. I don't know if that has anything to do. I mean, let's can we test the barrel right next to it, like as close as we can, and just see if it's you know forty on the barrel and sixteen on the frame, within you know an inch that's going to tell us something. As close as I can get here. Yeah. So we're an inch, inch and a half. About an inch. Inch. Yeah, pretty solid. See, it's yeah, it's not moving. So forty-five. Forty-five. So that there, there's no way there's a difference of thirty in, in two inches like that. Yeah, maybe they made it soft. Maybe this is soft. So what you're saying is, is we need to go borrow a Ruger that somebody doesn't mind, or sorry, borrow a Taurus that's that somebody doesn't mind. A uh, good one. A known good Taurus. We'll compare it. You're just taking some frame because this is frame is all one piece. Yeah. So if, it's, it's surprisingly it's, uniform. It's, it's, if it's good hardness all the way up through. It's the same. Yeah. That's good. If you test a, a known good one down underneath the grip frame where no one will see it. Yeah. Because that way we won't leave any marks on the outside where we care. Yeah. That should be a good test. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Each subcomponent that would have been different metallurgy is, you know, testing uniform. Ooh, that would be a good one if we can, if it works. Yeah, see, I can't get a good yeah. read there. It has to hold still at the preload force. The preload force, if it rattles from moving it, yeah. you can't get a good read. So what we've definitively determined is that it is something. <laughs> Barrel's probably good. <laughs> yeah. Cylinder is probably good. And then the frame is uniform. <laughs> Uniform and measures consistently. I love this stuff. I have a sneaky suspicion that the frame is soft. I don't, it's, it's weird though that the that the they wouldn't have hardened 
breach, but I guess the, I guess if it's softer, it's it's going to be um, a little bit more forgiving of of the cyclic stressors on on the expansion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't really get anywhere else. Nowhere else. I can't get in there because it moves around too much. All right. Maybe try the crane. There you go. All right, you see how much that moving is? We can trust it within about that much. Within about okay. two, maybe we can trust it. Plus or minus two. All right. I'm trying to hold it still, though. If there's a spot where I can hold it still. There's not really a spot where I can hold it still and call it zeroed. Let's see, I could change it. That's still in the in the 16, 18 range. 17 is really close to. 17. That seems pretty consistent. Yep. I mean it's You know, the difference between here from like a, a thermal mass standpoint and here is not huge. Like, I don't think that I could design a fire to anneal just here, but not here. Yeah, I agree. So that, 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 let me, that lets me think that either it's a different alloy that responded differently to mm -hmm. the fire. Mm -hmm. And is now horribly, horribly dangerous, or it's just, you know, the heat treat that they put onto it initially. But, uh, so, excuse to go track down somebody with another one of these. So, if you happen to be in the Los Angeles region and have a extra Taurus, you don't mind getting a hidden little dimple down around the air, uh, we'd, we'd like to hardness test it at some point because this is starting to become a little bit of a mystery and I'd like to know. All right, thanks for watching the, uh, you know, probably might have been one of the more boring videos, but I found it fascinating because this stuff is, this is really cool. <laughs> All right, have a good one.